In today's lab, you are running this reaction that you see at the top of the screen. And the way that this works is you're adding HCl and Na2S2O3, and both of these are colorless. You have a jar of each in your kit. Once they run the reaction and you get these products, the sulfur, which is a solid, will precipitate out. Sulfur is a yellow solid. It will precipitate out, settle to the bottom, make the solution cloudy rather than clear, and obscure the X underneath your spot plate. So you're going to make a black X on your white piece of paper, put your spot plate over it, run the reaction in the spot over the X, and when this X becomes invisible, because the yellow solid has precipitated out and obscured it, you're going to call time and say the reaction is finished at that point. And so this is what the spot plate looks like for you to run your reaction. Please double check the number of drops of each because sometimes uh, Science Interactive changes something in an experiment and I always find out about it after the fact. So double check with your instructions the number of drops of each chemical, but this is what we currently have. And you're going to put these drops in the spot plate in this order, and you must measure the drops very, very carefully. I'm looking for about the right answer. So there are, for example, eight drops of Na2S2O3 in this spot, eight in this spot, eight in this spot, eight in this spot et cetera. You'll notice you're keeping the amount of Na2S2O3 the same in all of those spots, but you are changing the amount of HCl. And you'll notice that you're adding distilled water, deionized distilled water, in some of the spots so that the total spots in all of your HCl, I'm sorry, the total drops in all of your HCl spots equals 12. And that's important for our calculations just to make them easier. So you're adding your two reagents, you're adding your HCl, and you're adding your Na2S2O3 separately because we want to begin timing as soon as the reaction starts. And the reaction will start as soon as you combine those two reactants. We're also repeating each set of conditions for a trial, and we're running three different sets of conditions. So in the first column, you are combining the stuff in spot A with the stuff in spot C and immediately starting your stopwatch once those two get combined. You're looking at it from the top over the dark X and as soon as the X is obscured, you're hitting the timer on your stopwatch and you're recording the number of seconds that that reaction took. Don't do decimal places but do convert it to seconds. So if it's two minutes and if it's two minutes and 10 seconds, a minute is 60 seconds. So that's 120 seconds for the two minutes, another 10 seconds for the 10 seconds. That would be 130 seconds. You can use a, a converter on the internet if you need to, but do not report it as two minutes, 10 seconds. Report it as 130 seconds. Don't use decimal places. You're then going to repeat and add the spot B1 to the spot D1. That is exactly the same circumstances. You're timing it again, and it should be about 130 seconds. It won't be exactly that necessarily. I don't expect it to be exactly the same. It looks suspicious if everything is exactly the same, but it'll be close to that. And then you're recording that for the time for the second trial under those conditions. And then eventually you're going to take an average of those two times and report simply the average of those two trials. We've talked about averages before, repeating an experiment and taking the averages and how important that is. Then you're going to run the reaction with a different set of conditions. And you'll do that by taking the cont contents of spot A2 and combining it with C2 and timing it. And then you'll take the contents of B2, combine it with D2, and it should be about the same time. 
And then finally, you'll do the contents in the third column, again, repeating it twice to get about the same time. Now, the time in column one will not necessarily be the same as the time in column two, which will not necessarily be the same as the time in column three. But the two trials in column three should be about the same time. So I hope this makes sense.